Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Going to do an unboxing video today showing you the Atari 2600 Junior. Now it's euphemistically called that. It's not called that on the box or, you know, in the manual or anything. It's the Atari 2600. It's just the Junior version, which it came to be called, that came out in 1986. It was sort of a rebranding, a resurrection of the Atari 2600. Um, based on um, in 85, you know, the NES was test marketed in the US and then it came out in the 1986, in 1986 to sort of resurrect the home console industry in the United States. And the Atari, and Atari put out a smaller, sort of budget friendly version of their 2600 system. I remember it, uh, seeing this in Toys R Us for $49.99, uh, which is a pretty good price. And, um, you know, with in the late uh, 80s, you know, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, what it was all, you know, that was all the rage. Uh, the Master System was there, but mostly it was all about the Nintendo Entertainment System. You could get an Intellivision. Uh, the Intellivision carried on uh, in the late 80s. And, um, you know, after Mattel had sold, you know, after it was no longer under uh, a Mattel system, after NT INTV uh, bought them out uh, for the Intellivision. So, yeah, the 2600 and the Intellivision did continue in the late 80s. And, um, the 2600 Junior was Atari's sort of almost like a re-entry into the video game industry. You know, they'd been, you know, there all along, but this sort of reintroduced the 2600 to a lot of people. And um, I want to talk, before I open it, now the materials inside are just, the system itself and, you know, the joystick and everything, drop dead, mint condition. It looks like this system has hardly been played at all. Uh, but before I get to that, I want to talk about the box a little bit. It's kind of an interesting box. Now it shows the sort of smaller, sleeker design of the 2600. It looks kind of like the 7800, and it's, you know, smaller, cheaper. It just comes with one joystick. It's a pretty small box, but I want to show you something funny on the side. It says, this Atari 2600 belongs to, and then it has a spot for your name and address. Now, that's kind of funny. I guess, you know, for kids, it could show like a sense of ownership of it, but practically, I don't really know what it's good for. If you take your Atari 2600 somewhere, and you leave it behind, maybe somebody could mail it to you. It doesn't really have a spot for your phone number, but I guess you could put that below that if somebody could call you and say, hey, you left your boxed Atari 2600 over here or whatever, if they didn't want to hassle with shipping it to you. I don't know what the case, for some reason, it's got that on the side of the box. Anyway, um, over here, it just tells you what comes uh, with the system. And I like the back of the box. I love the old, you know, the backs of old boxes because it shows the, you know, most of them show the screenshots of a lot of games. And this one shows a lot of the better Atari uh, 2600 arcade ports, you know, real colorful. You can tell the marketing department really put a lot into thought of what games to put on the back. Not only are these popular titles, but they're very colorful, visually attractive, so it they really look good on the back of the box. And, um, and it's kind of a strange box how it kind of opens on the top like this and it sort of fans out. So let's, let's, let's open this sucker up. So I'm gonna lay it down like this so the 2600 doesn't come plopping out like it did uh, when I tried this before. <laughs> so I open it up here and you've got your very slim, attractive Atari 2600 console. Atari 2600 Junior, as it's euphemistically called. Um, got the rainbow stripe there. And this one actually still has the little plastic uh, sticker or whatever put over the the metal there because it showed you know the, the customer never took this off and got your um, serial number or whatever in the back very sleek very attractive system um it's got uh different buttons on off color black and white i guess e even in 1986 some people still used a black and white tv um you got uh select and start and then um, so yeah, just a very sleek, nice looking system. You know, it takes up a, you know less room than uh, the original model. So there's the base unit. And it came with a um, little warranty card here. And interestingly, it comes with a little catalog about Atari computers. Atari was really pushing their computers. Just the industry in general had sort of gone to computers at this point. The Commodore... Uh, 64 was really popular, and um, the Atari ST computer line, you know, this shows you, gives you information on Atari computers, so that's pretty neat to have, and of course, the system manual.
There you go here, a little look at that. And it shows you how to hook it up. These older systems are really easy to hook up compared to the newer ones. And, uh, but nevertheless, it does give you instructions. Now, everything else is sort of in the bottom of the box here. So we'll pop this up. And the joystick, nicely wrapped up here. This is exactly how about it. I've never played this because I already have an Atari 2600. I still have the same 2600 I got in 1983. Yeah, for $10, I got a regular Atari 2600. Um, you know, just a, the wood grain design uh, for $10 from a kid in school with 10 games. So I haven't actually played this 2600 Junior, and that's the Atari I'm still playing. And so it's still neatly wrapped up uh, joystick controller. And as I mentioned, it only comes with one. And it doesn't come with um, paddle controllers like the 20, original 2600 did. Power adapter still in the box. Very nice condition. Makes you wonder if this system was even ever used. RF switch still in the bubble wrap here. Everybody likes to pop the little bubbles here. Looks like some of these have already been popped. So maybe he just got this Atari, popped the bubbles, and never played the games. And it come, comes with all the hookups, as you can see. And that's it. Got the empty box. Anyway, so this was a great find uh, at Goodwill, um, as I'd mentioned before. I did an NES unboxing video a while back that you guys may have seen. A similar situation. The same Goodwill, I got this 2600 Junior for $20. I got a boxed NES for $20. That was, you know, 12, 15 years ago. Not likely to find anything like that now. If Goodwill has something, you know, like this now, inevitably they're going to put it either online or on their um, auction site, you know, online, or their in-store auctions. You know, every Saturday, the Goodwills I know of, the ones around my house, they have auctions, you know, just live auctions. You can come in the preceding week and, you know, write in, you know, what you want to pay for, you know, what you bid on an item. But then on Saturday, they have a live auction. Stuff like this typically goes for, you know, in those auctions. They would obviously go for a lot more than $20. But anyway, I'm not selling my 2600 Junior. I think it's a neat part of video game history when the Atari was trying, trying to compete with the Nintendo Entertainment System and at least ride off their coattails of the NES being, you know, back, you know, bringing, you know, console video games back in the U.S. Anyway, there's my 2600 Junior. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Um, what Goodwill finds have you made that were just awesome and that you decided to keep? Put that in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.